Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the Get Literate podcast. I'm Stephanie, and I'm here today with three books that can change your life. Now, admittedly, realistic fiction is my favorite genre to dig into, but I do have a special affinity for nonfiction books as well. As a literacy teacher, educator, and a graduate professor, I read a lot. I read a lot of research, I read a lot of professional articles, and a lot of professional books in order to keep learning about my field and then share that information with others. But on a personal side, I love devouring personal development books as well. I read them like candy. And I'm an active reader with them as well. I'm writing in the margins. I've got sticky notes and sticky flags everywhere. I'm highlighting and pulling out quotes for my quote notebook. And I'm basically just trying to lift out those little lessons, those little nuggets that can make me be a better person. I'm on a quest to be healthier, to have a better sense of well-being, to have stronger relationships and friendships, to get more creative, to get more knowledgeable about how the world works. And books help us do that, right? There's not an app for that. There's a book for that. And so today I want to share three books that not only can change your life, but I truly believe that they have changed mine. Now, I had a laundry list of books to choose from, so I'm going to share what I believe are my current top three books, but I'm definitely going to give you some runner-up titles to consider as well. So first up, the very first book that I think can change your life because it has changed mine is Everything is Figureoutable by Marie Forleo. Now, I love all things Marie Forleo. I listen to her podcast. I devour her blog posts, and I love her Marie TV. I first saw her when she was working with Oprah and have been a fan ever since. Now, the great thing about Everything is Figure Outable is that I happened upon the book at the exact time that I needed it, right? It was definitely book serendipity. And it was after a couple of weeks of just kind of being in a, a rut or being in a slump and not really feeling the greatest. I needed a kick in the pants and everything is figure outable gave me that kick in the pants. But in a way, as if you were sitting with a best friend over a cup of coffee, giving you some advice that you'd likely heard before, but needed put in such a simplistic way to realize that you do actually have control over your life was pretty profound. So the whole idea behind the book, as you can tell, is everything is figure outable. Everything. With a few guiding questions, with a little bit of backwards mapping, we can figure out where we need to go next. Now, we might not like that answer, but everything is figure outable. And if it isn't, it's likely because it is something out of our control. And instead of trying to control it, we can figure out our response to it. That was the game changer for me because I have a bad habit of trying to change things I can't control rather than changing my response to those things. And everything is figure outable gave me the tools to do that. There were a lot of concrete mindset shifts, a lot of concrete and tangible actions that she recommends. I really loved two sections. She has an insight to action challenge to try to put this work into practice. And my favorite figure outable field notes. Those were notes that inspired you to dream big, but then actually gave you the practical action to figure out how you could get there. And what I loved overall the most is that this book wasn't just for someone who has these big grand dreams that they want to figure out. It's for anyone who just wants to be the best version of themselves, whatever that happens to look like for you. And that's why I love this book. In my review online on Goodreads, I ended my review with, please read this book. And that's exactly what I'm saying to you. No matter where you are in your life, how big, how small your dreams are, what challenges you're facing, I think 
you'll find some guidance and inspiration and a little bit of peace inside the pages of Everything is Figureoutable by Marie Forleo. Now, my second book that has definitely changed my life and I think could change yours is, this is a popular one, I bet you're not going to be surprised, this is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. I love all things Elizabeth Gilbert, but I haven't actually read Big Magic until fairly recently. And I came into the book knowing that I wasn't very creative. I wished I was creative. I wanted to be crafty. I wanted to make things. But Elizabeth pretty much blew that uh, limiting belief right out of the water. I learned about what creativity is. I learned what creativity isn't. And I discovered that, you know what? We are all creative. It's how we're creative and how we live into that creativity that is different. The big life-changing nugget for me was her view on ideas. What ideas are, where they came from, and what happens to them if they're not nurtured. They're like these little whispers that happen upon you, these quick fleeting ideas, these quick tingling feelings of there's something great about to happen. But if you don't act on those ideas, then they hop right on over to someone else. My husband has this phrase that I think is so true. And he says, he who hesitates loses. And I think big magic embodies that. When you get that quick idea, when you get that quick feeling that something good is going to happen if you just do X, Y, or Z, act on it. Act on it. And Big big Magic gives us the inspiration to do that. I also loved another big mindset shift that she gave to me um, was saying, you know, it's it's not about always being, um, you know, on guard for creativity. It's not about looking for the next thing. It's not about finding your passion. It's actually just remaining curious. That if we just stay open to curiosity, if we just say yes to something and then follow that trail of curiosity, it could lead us to our next big thing without a lot of effort. And she explained how a very tiny interest in keeping her own garden ultimately led to her writing her book, The Signature of All Things. Just by saying yes to one little thing in her personal life for no good reason at all, other than she wanted to, and she felt like the the idea was there. So when I turned that last page, I felt that tingly sensation that she mentions, you know, a little giddiness that you can kind of rest assured that There are ideas that come to you and there is inspiration that comes to you and ideas are knocking on your door every single day. And one of the lines, uh, it was actually her final line in the book. I love opening lines, but this made me love closing lines even more. She says, the treasures that are hidden inside you are hoping you will say yes. And this book gives you the tools and the inspiration to say yes. That's why it's on my current list of favorites of books that can change your life. Now, my third book is one that I've read recently. I actually read it for our Get Literate Members Community Book Club when we were focusing on the theme of growing. And that book is published quite recently. It's called You Happier by Dr. Daniel Amen. You Happier was definitely a game changer for me, but in a much different way than Everything is Figureoutable or Big Magic. You Happier gives you a deep dive into neuroscience and the seven neuroscience secrets of feeling good, but not just feeling good, but feeling good based on your brain type. I had absolutely no idea that we all have different types of brains. Sure, I knew we had different DNA and different personalities and different tendencies, but different types of brains, that that was new for me. And knowing that we can cultivate our health and our wellness and our happiness and our growth and our creativity based on our brain type to get there faster and easier and more comfortably, that was the game changer. That was that life-changing moment. 
Early in the book, Dr. Amen recommends that you take his brain quiz and you figure out what your brain type is. And then you travel through the rest of the book with that knowledge in mind, learning how you can support your unique individual brain type. Now, I happen to be a number nine. I'm a combination of things. I am persistent. I am cautious and I am sensitive and it definitely nailed what my brain is, what my habits are, what my tendencies are for better or for worse. But traveling through the rest of the book, I learned techniques to make use of those persistent, cautious and sensitive strengths and then to figure out how to better support my potential weaknesses for myself and my relationship with others. By the time I was done with this book, I already had done every single recommended exercise inside. I started a wellness journal to keep track of all of my new brain boosting routines and rituals. I bought the supplements that Dr. Amen recommended. Happy Saffron is definitely something that's going to stay in my toolkit. And I'm not done. Now that I've read You Happier, I am diving into Dr. Amen's backlist of books. I've even signed up for some of his online courses. To be quite honest, I have been struggling more to come out of the pandemic than I did to go in it. I am very happy at home. I am very happy with my set routines. I am very happy with my small little bubble in my basement doing the work that I love. But now as the world goes back to normal, I've got to figure out a new normal that involves leaving the basement, that involves teaching and learning in person instead of on Zoom, that involves social interaction, something that I haven't done in a while. And quite frankly, I'm quite happy by myself with a book. You Happier gave me the tools I needed to make the shift out of the pandemic just as easy as it was for me to shift into it. It really gave me the tools that I need to say unequivocally, I now take 100% responsibility for the way that I feel. I take 100% responsibility for how I want to show up in life, for myself, for my family, and for all the years to come. And You Happier, with a single quiz and a whole lot of information, gave me the confidence to be able to believe in myself and my beautiful brain type, however unique it is, as we move forward. So that's You Happier by Dr. Daniel Amen. So those are my top three books, but honestly, it was a hard choice. So I mentioned that I would give you the runners up and I'm just gonna list through the titles and hope that you'll share your titles that resonated with you as well. I think you should read books like The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin, Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nequist, The Joy of Missing Out by Tanya Dalton, Let It Be Easy by Susie Moore, Do Less by Kate Northrup, and of course, Untamed by Glennon Doyle, and You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. So how do I want you to bring this to your actual life? Well, I want you to go grab one of these three books or two of them or three of them or some of the runner-ups that I shared as well. And as you read, And really, as you read these books, as you experience the world around you in general, I want to recommend something that I've started as a result of listening to Gretchen Rubin. So Gretchen Rubin wrote The Happiness Project, and in it, she recommended that we all create a set of personal commandments, which is really just a set of personal core beliefs of how we want to be in the world. As part of this work, as part of reading personal development and learning about the world around us, it's quite easy to just take one line of book and jot down a lesson you learn that you want to take forward with you. Keep these in a special place. Maybe it's a page of your notebook. Maybe it's a a page on your notes app or a sticky note on your Google Keep. Whatever that is, start a running list of the lessons you're learning that you don't want to forget from these books. It's easy to get excited while you read them. It's harder to maintain them after you close that last page. Creating a set of personal commandments can help you hang on to those important lessons. And then the next part, which is really important, is to keep those personal commandments visible and read them often. So flag that page of your notebook. 
move that notes app to the home page of your phone so that you're reminded to take a look at it. Jot them down and post them on your bulletin board or your whiteboard or a sticky note by your computer. If you're really into journaling, you might like to take a look at Rachel Hollis's Start Today journal. That's where you literally list your goals and dreams and commandments on a single page every single morning in order to remind your brain that these are the things you hold true for yourself and you want to remain true to them each and every day. So that's something, if you're a little bit more into journaling, that might be appealing to you. I highly recommend Rachel Hollis's Start Today Journal. So there you have it, the top three books that have changed my life and a challenge for you to not only read those books, but to use them to create a set of personal commandments that you keep visible, you refer to often so that you can continue to live these lessons from the books into your actual life. Now, you know, I would love to hear your books that you recommend that have changed your life. So you can head online to the show notes at alitlife.com, or you can head to your favorite social media platform. Find me at Afanito Lit and share the titles there. And I've got one more special request. If this episode resonated with you, if you know that you have found a book that you're going to read next, I'd love if you would share it with a fellow reader who you think would also benefit from hearing these titles. Take a quick screenshot of it, send it through text, post it on social media, and let's see if we can start crowdsourcing the different titles that are changing all of our lives so that we can all benefit from taking those bookish lessons and living them in real life together. I can't wait to hear the titles that you suggest. And thanks for listening. Happy reading.